Although I do not get paid to comment on Kairut, I cannot resist because there's so many of them that get so far removed. But there was one tonight that was referred to as being an update. And uh, because it's been so long, but I would like to point out there has been throughout the recent past several versions about different aspects of human life. But the main one was that all situations are ad hoc. And the little update was, which by itself makes almost no sense, which, come to think about it, why should I worry about that? That says all ad hocs are situations, which is not just a crude attempted paradox. Guess I'll teach me to try to... No wonder they don't pay me to straighten out these kairos. I'm either incapable or they cannot be straightened out, and I personally have my own choice in that, my own favorite. As regards, as regards man's unique intellectual secondary world being an overlay of words on the primary realm, we were noting, if you recall, quote, that life is what happens, man what explains it. Man is what explains it. This leads, that's about where we were last time, if you recall, but this leads what I was trying to get to before we ran out of food last time. Tape was. This brings on the consideration of another aspect that is never ordinarily imagined. It brings it to a grander scale than is ever ordinarily imagined. Not that the whole concept is brand new, but it's on such a scale that it's never perceived in this way. And that is that life and man, take it as a term, hyphenated, life and man, are the supreme paradigmatic symbiotic relationship on the basis, don't lose your place, of the fact that life is what happens and man is what explains it. This, if we just wanted to leave it at that, explains, I'll just give you my suggestion, explains every GD thing in the world. <laughs> that there is, that man and life is a relationship of a symbiotic nature that is on such a scale that any question you had to ask, if you saw, had a clear vision of that, any question after that is you'd start to ask it and go, oh. <laughs> but also on a more limited, but nonetheless, may I suggest, magnificent scale, this continues with, and I look at it as a term instead of man and life and man, as man and his mind you have the same kind of symbiotic relationship between the two. Now when you get to this level, then consider that not only is this man's general responsibility to explain life, <laughs> but it is very much, it is more specifically his duty, are you ready? to explain himself. <coughs> Kairut and some of his relatives for a long time warned me not to even ever bring this up. They said, it's a waste of time. <laughs> but I got to tell you, everybody's got some relatives that, I don't know, it seems like there's some inbreeding in every strain of every part of every universe. As per a Kairu, then, fearlessly pressing on, having this much tape left, and since everyone clearly sees this, or some other alternative. As per a Kairu, <laughs> well, I can't say that I wasn't warned. They warned me. As per a Kairu tonight, at the intellectual end of man's nervous system, At that end, man is not only in charge of pulling himself up by his own bootstraps. 
we're talking about the intellectual end, and we are those of you with shoe fetishes, you know, <laughs> bring your mind up a little bit higher. A garter fetish? No. <laughs> it is. It is not only man's responsibility to pull himself up by his own bootstraps. It's also his job to make his own shoes and then to conclude that he must continually rework them and in some way make them fit better. <laughs> if that was too much, then, oh, I stop there then. How about this? What this amounts to is that he is made to continually in an intellectual manner stand on his own shoulders. Well, since our ratings can't go down any lower, <laughs> then back, back to another Cairo tonight that met with nada. That it said in the intellectual structure, think about this, of the city. I didn't want to really have to crude it up too much more, but think about this structure. Could I give a hint? Maybe some kind of metaphorical, maybe a band of acrobats. <laughs> it said that in the intellectual structure of the city, when a man shoots himself through the foot, Someone else receives a head injury. <laughs> when it comes to the continuity of life, which there was a Kairuk to not mention that, that there must be something, a kind of foundation. And that there is a sequential, stable, some kind of predictable continuity to the expansion of life. If you want to look at it as a movement of drawing arrows and making hand gestures that way, or some kind of structure that continues to build. Probably the oldest term in the West is the old one that we've dug up several times. Is if men say, I am what I am today. Where some of the guys giving himself some praise that he's a thinker, I and all of us are where we are today because of the fact that we stand on the shoulders of giants. That is everything that we are. If you are a famous scientist today, a physicist, you would say, "Well, I am only where I am because of the work done by Einstein and Mr. Lumber Planck." <laughs> Doctor, I'm sorry. Consider the structure, though. To shoot yourself, for a man to shoot himself through the foot, will always result in a head wound to someone. And the idea that we stand on the shoulders of giants makes all the sense in the world and is undeniable. We'd just be playing, if we were ordinary people, some sort of foolish, sarcastic game to say, well, that's not true. Because at the city level, that structure is true, that they are standing on the shoulders of giants. But, may I suggest to you that what you're really charged with, if you get to the point of charging yourself, that is, you become trying to do something in your own lifetime, is you have got to stand on your own shoulders. Mm -hmm. I know it's meta-rational, Okay, that's, that's, I guess, a nice synonym for nuts. Insane. Irrational. But how about another old one? Is, did every man or a decent man, an honest man, just a good man, has got to pull himself up by his own bootstraps? Now, no one takes that as being <clears throat> irrational because it obviously has to be a metaphor because you cannot reach down and pull yourself up. You cannot jump up in the air and stay there. And so everyone understands, well, that's a metaphor. That means that everyone has got to start with what they've got 
and by the den of their own effort work themselves up to a better position. Uh, another man recently pointed out, or had as his attitude, that he assumed, he just had as his operating assumption, that everything in the beginning immediately was a metaphor. And then he looked for the reality behind it and said the other way around. So rather than take the idea that people should or have to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps, rather than take that as being a metaphor, how about this? Assume, you know, don't take that as, well, it's impossible now look for the metaphor. Take that guy's attitude. That is what I'm insinuating to you that from a quite real view, you've got to do that. <clears throat> Only 20 minutes left, eh? <laughs> okay. How about, don't lose your place. <laughs> Even if you want to. Don't give up yet. All right, how about to another car route that we were hitting on last time? That without man, life would need no explanations. But without explanations, life would have no men. Now this kind of irrational rationale, even though the sentence, I guess, rhetorically makes some sense, it can't be true. But assume, just to speculate, assume that that is possible. That without... Men, life would need no explanations. If life was simply, let's say, a, in this planet, on this planet, that was simply the primary world, then there would be no explanations required. No animal, no fungus, no plant is required to, is expected to, in no way, to explain what it's doing. In no manner. And so without men, there'd be no explanations, which I guess anybody would go along with that that was semi-literate and gave us 30 seconds worth of attention going out, big deal. But then, of course, as always, to throw in that which makes it have some value, which, of course, makes it insane, is that not only without man, life would need no explanations, but without explanations, life would have no men. Which, again, I guess a sentence, you could diagram it and go, all right, it's got a noun, a verb, and an object, but hell, you know, that's insane. No? May I, su may I suggest not? Let's assume, I was going to ask you to speculate, that that could be true. Then if it were operationally correct, then that would do several things I could easily mention. We have not changed the subject. It would produce arrows that had two heads. And we're speaking of arrows now in a verbal in the sense of them being verbs and processes and not nouns. It would allow the expansion of life of man in more than one direction at a time. It would in fact sort of a larger scale it would not limit time slice history to one dimension. Uh, at least anyone think that this is some sort of that science fiction. The reality of it is why I was threatening last time that I could prove the insanity of this, except it's not in a way the ordinary mind would perceive of. The proof of it is this. There are several ways I can put it. I'm going to do it fast because you can't prove it to an ordinary mind. Is that things seem so mixed up? <laughs> is that there are so many opinions, different opinions? <laughs> that there are so many righteous, intelligent, decent people that have opinions that are in direct conflict with other equally <laughs> decent, righteous, intellectual, educated people. That the world is so confused <laughs> at the ordinary level. That there are so many conflicting opinions, beliefs, etc. That no one can seem to get it right. There is the proof. I'm doing my imitation of ordinary people. Either that or an extraordinary person with a severe headache, I guess. <laughs> what if life expanded in one direction? Which is what people, ordinary people, two-eyed creatures standing on a finite plane, looking at the best they can, wherein, my Kairou tonight also pointed out, that real evolutionary progress, the, a greater view of it, literally, truthfully, 
is that it's omnidirectional. But nobody, it's not possible at the ordinary level for a mind to perceive of expansion being omnidirectional. It can hear why it's said, but it makes no sense. Because then you're left with, you've got to get into what? Personal anecdotes. Which, by now I keep doing that, I assume that none of you have lost your place and fallen into some kind of trap taking it as being, well, everybody wants to tell, boy, my, about my war wounds. It's much more than that. It was a man wrote the show. Last time. I wanted to know why. We keep seeming to engage in personal anecdote bashing when, in a sense, that's all that anybody really knows is based upon their own personal anecdotes. And then he put a semicolon, if I remember correctly, and said, my brother-in-law says that he thinks that's exactly your point. But I don't get it. If you ask anybody, what is progress? What is the expansion of human life? The ordinary mind, and we don't have to look and do this and point to other people. All you got to do is look at you. If you ask what would be some kind of improvement in life, and if an ordinary person says, well, I'm no philosopher, I'm not religious, I don't have any, perhaps they're akin to George Herbert Walker Bush, and say, well, I don't have that big vision thing. <laughs> and so we just tell me just in, ge just tell me in general. <laughs> Can you believe I quoted a president? <laughs> well, it's hot in here. Last time I think somebody ever said something along those lines. I was on. But if you ask an ordinary person, they say, well, I'm not a philosopher. I don't think about what real progress is in life. Of course, an or if it was an or really an ordinary person, they'd probably be religious, and if they were going to respond, and they don't have to be serious or sincere, as the Kyrie pointed out tonight, because that's not the purpose of the day, to go, well... It's for the whole world to be more decent. Or if they were more specific in their religion, they might say, well, I, I think the point is for everybody to uh, be a Christian or to be a Jew or be a Muslim. But if you took somebody, I'm just trying to get you to see that it's not limited to that because it's not some fault of religion or philosophy. But if you've got an ordinary man, you say, well, how does life expand or what should be the purpose? And they say, well, I never thought about it. I'm no damn philosopher. And you say, well, just give me some idea. There's a prize. You'll get a six-pack if you'll answer this at all. And, I, and so a guy might go, all right. So a guy might go, all right. And now here's where it gets into the widest possible use of my term or the term personal anecdote because the man had to go, all right, I don't really go around thinking about philosophy. Oh, I know you told us all that. Just give me a damn answer. And he'd say, well, surely an expansion of life would be that uh, if people would quit mugging each other so much on the streets. All right, got that out. Do you understand? That is specific. That is directional. And, of course, at any ordinary level, if we're now still dealing with ordinary intelligence, I think you're going to expect me to come in and go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Boy, talk about your dunderheads. You call that progress? You're stopping people from beating each other and stealing? That's no progress. Now, you know that's insane. If in some way you could stop physical aggression, one person against another, who is going to say that would not be progress? Not me. Not in public. <laughs> but because it's not, not progress. But, of course, it's something less than progress. Because, But now here we go, see. The ordinary mind can only perceive of progress. I'm using the widest possible sense. Free from all political, economic, religious, cultural, nationalistic, racial, sexual connotations. Anybody would say, all right, I can give you some example. And they'd say, well, if the government would leave us alone more, uh, if we could improve the environment, everybody would come up with something. Because everybody knows if they just said, all right, if us working class people had more money, that would be progress. But it is always directional. You understand now what I mean. It's not whether their direction is right or wrong. It has to be directional. Don't lose your place. And I am pointing out that the real expansion compared to that, it's not a theory, it's omnidirectional, which is why everybody ha has a different opinion about what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> because at a wide level you can't say if the man says well progress to me would be the only thing I think about if humanity would get decent enough to quit beating each other up and killing each other over you know, money and robbing each other 
No ordinary person is going to say that's not true. But think about this. Now I'm pushing it, but it's still a fact. Ask those who, for a living, are muggers. Now I know that's true. That is so crude to start with, if ordinary people listen, then they could dismiss it. Well, you know, Jesus, the whole idea is bigger crackpot than I thought because, you know, they're anomalies. They're the warts. They're the you know, very close veins on the legs of society and civilized people. <laughs> and, and so they could dismiss it. But how about this? What if you start saying, all right, if that is a problem, if we all agreed that we would be better off that if men were not so aggressive and hostile and physically abusive to one another, then you get into, all right, but how do we do it? And that's where you get a continued. And none of them are right or wrong, but you get not a unified vision of what should be done, much less the, what the problem is to start with. And the reason I'm telling you is, is that it's all expanding compared to the vision in the finite world, which is where the nervous system exists, it would be an expansion like this, that you'd be staying in the middle like of a balloon being blown up, and life is going out in that direction. Well, if you want to take it on a, like the ordinary idea right now, the theoretical idea at least, of the ever-expanding universe. And it's all, of course, then you'd look at, we were in the center of the Big Bang, which your brain thinks it was anyway. But it's all, well, well, it does, it's supposed to. But it's like everything would be expanding this way. Now, you can hear that on a PBS special, I guess, and think, well, yeah, that's a great idea. But then if I turn right around or you turn to yourself and somebody gets your parking place where you work <laughs> or somebody shortchanges you in the store, you no longer have an vision of you know, the ever-expanding universe. <laughs> then you realize, here's what's wrong with the universe is people like that get parked where they don't belong. <laughs> there is the proof that expansion is omnidirectional. Is the very reason that the ordinary mind finds fault and nobody can agree what expansion is or what progress is. By and large, as you know, once an individual universe, that is an individual system, gets over a certain age and their universe, another aspect of the certain cosmological theories of the ever-expanding universe and it falls back on themselves, then your own little universe reaches a certain age wherein your hormones begin to get, eh, you know, who cares whether she's got a brand new garter belt and flavored whipped cream. It's like, it's like you reach that age and your universe quits expanding and your universe begins to contract and you think, well, maybe I am a Hindu and didn't know it. You know, the Vishnu is now exhaling or inhaling. The point being, you reach a certain age in everyone's own universe at the ordinary level, they begin to think, well, wait a minute, I'm no longer in that much doubt about what progress would be because now I begin to realize there ain't no such thing as progress. The whole world's going to hell. <laughs> then, of course, then you know, ordinary people don't look at it, but then you know, by God, there's no longer any question, I'm grown. <laughs> it could be a situation that there is a man 50 years old, and he says, his father's still alive, lives down the road, his old man's 80. And up until that point, this 50-year-old guy stuff, you know, feeling like he had to say yes, papa, and hold his head down. And now suddenly he feels like, hell, I'm grown. That is, now I'm as pissed as he is. I'm finally grown at the age of 50. That is the closest it gets to be of any kind of unified feeling in the world of what progress is. Is the, you, If you took all the people whose hormones are getting that worn down, that their universe is indeed about to be inhaled back, and they are about to all become Hindus, that is, dead Hindus, then if that would be the closest, this is no great... This is not specific to where I was pointing, but since we got here and some of you are hearing something besides laughing, is if you took those people, it would be of no consequence because they are on, they're in the line that's really going over the hill. But if you took all those people, that'd be the closest you would have to some kind of unified or some kind of consensus in the collective wisdom. If you got that kind of old people, it's them say, wait a minute, don't ask me for specific what progress is. There ain't no such thing. Which is why the older the ordinary people get, the more that they believe it's all been a waste. Back to where we were. The expansion of life, of men, of life needing men to explain what's going on, of life having to have men explain themselves, of life continually creating men through explanations and vice versa, what it creates 
is a kind of, even though this is not science fiction, as I said, it creates these kind of dreams. It creates them even outside of science fiction into uh, modern-day physics, cosmology, you know, the idea is that time could run in several directions. And they keep saying that, several directions. Like, well, it doesn't just run this way, it might run that way. You know, well, okay, but, you know, why stop there? If it's running anywhere, you can't do that. It's going omnidirectional. And the proof is there. It's always the proof that the mind, as it is, polar-based, sees and theorizes that, wait a minute, it seems like it's only going that way. But wait a minute, the better it gets. If it can go that way... Ha-ha! That son of a gun might be able to go that way. And, so, and suddenly, in the right conditions, you're famous. What happens throughout history? That a man stands up in some field, literally and allegorically, like in physics, and says, well, everyone says that the future, the truth, lies right over there. When circumstances are just right, a man makes a name for himself. Through great effort, all kinds I could be cute about it, but suddenly of going, wait a minute, it could lie over this way. And when times are right, <laughs> and a pertinent coward, if you noticed, tonight was said that there was one man whose act consisted of doing the unexpected. He was never all that popular. Because the, that is not unexpected if everyone says, well, the truth in whatever field, in economics, literary criticism, the truth is over here. <laughs> What's going to be the corresponding, the conflicting theory? How is somebody, once this seems to run its course, which it always will, that's over there? Who is going to next be famous? Who is going to be the next prophet? The man who saw through the childish facade who saw through the impotence the, um, of, the, of this idea, this artistic thrust. You're going to be a man who went, ha, it doesn't lie over the western horizon. Follow me, folks. The east. And people are sorely amazed. But notice, that is not unexpected. I mean, the people in Bible say it is. They'll say, my God, my breath is taken away. And of course, the revolutionists would think, well, you know, your breath is pretty flighty. I mean, I say your breath has a serious stability problem. If, you know, somebody hollers, the truth is up. And somebody says, nay, the truth is down, and people are sorely impressed. Then they got a pretty easy sorely to impress. The expansion of life and of man is literally, compared to the way it appears, would be omnidirectional. And I was going to leave it. And the proof being, what I was trying to get you to consider on your own, just what I'm describing, that it appears to be absolutely not so. But not just not so in one direction. That is, what I've just said, that expansion is omnidirectional, that is no common theory. That is not part of the thinking in any area, anywhere, other than cosmology, they, they still want to play around with the idea of the Big Bang, but we're not in the center of it. So it's not omnidirectional from our view. Close, but no Cupid doll. And so the idea that expansion is truly omnidirectional is not any sort of given, it's not even an acceptable theory anywhere. So there is no opposing theory, is what I'm trying to get you to see. So I can't say, well, wait a minute, the proof of what I'm telling you, my new theory, my Monday theory that life expands omnidirectional, and my proof, at least my proclaimed proof, is the fact that there are so many Philistines and Dunderheads and Peckerwoods disagree with it. They don't disagree with it. If anybody heard it, they go, you know, sense makes sense, but that's crazy. It's not true. So there is no organized or serious opposition to this. The ordinary world is not, good ordinary punches do not find what appears to be an extraterrestrial duty on the other hand. They do not find it worthy of much contempt or you know, who wants to argue about the existence of something that's non-existent. How are you going to worry about being fired from a job that has no job description? The proof being 
to leave you in an obscure enough way, the proof being, did you follow that, is the fact that that kind of idea not only does not exist, but if it in some way we bought, had all kinds of money and put up billboards and TV time all over the country saying this is the most important idea of the 20th century, or all centuries, is that the expansion of life is omnidirectional. If we did all of that, it would be like you had dropped a balloon <laughs> off of a 30,000 foot building. I mean, a nice fill balloon on a calm day, a calm night. You understand? The impact of that would be, <sighs> you would not have people out in the street. You know, like you would if you said something like, here is the most important idea in the world. And you had enough to put it on all the television networks and newspapers so that they would think, well, so that people would correctly assume, well, there's big money. This is not just some kind of small-time crackpot doing this. <laughs> and the message was something like, you know, the world will come to an end next Tuesday. Or that Martians are everywhere and they have slipped into our midst by disguising themselves as rabbis. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> Then you'd get some serious opposition or almost any other crackpot idea you could come up with. You understand it? You would. You'd have people out there marching in the streets because they think, wait a minute, this is serious. We've got to do something about this now. We can't have people trying to influence the country that, you know, there are Martians here amongst us or that the world's going in next Tuesday. They'll run, hell, they'll run all my stock market holdings. But to say that life expands omnidirectionally, a kind of proof is the fact that not only does the idea not exist, but if it was put out, there would be no opposition to it. But a better, quote, proof of it is the fact, of what I started out trying to get you to see, is the fact that everyone points in a particular direction of where life is expanding or even where it should be. Even soreheads, as they say, well, life is not expanding, life's not growing. You say, well, thank you for your views, but could you do this? Could you tell us how it could grow? And they'd be delighted. And they will point. But notice, everybody on this planet, correctly so, points somewhere else. But if you put them all, if you put them all together, what would you have? <laughs> I rest your case. <laughs>